everyone, welcome back to Sweetbriar Farm and in this video we're going to talk about our farm plans for 2023. And just so you know, we do have a hat giveaway going on right now, so I'll link the video to the where we talk about that. But if you leave a comment in this video or that video, we're going to enter you into the hat giveaway drawing. So one thing that we're bringing back to the farm in 2023 uh, for Christmas, we got our um, our two oldest boys quail cages so we're gonna give quail another shot this year so uh, we'll probably pick up some quail chicks in the spring as long as the boys earn their eggs <laughs> then uh, we'll hatch some quails up or maybe start with chicks I don't know and uh, give that another go so we tried quail last year I even got some for his birthday and he loved them and took good care of them but we just didn't have the right setup I think we expected quail to be like tiny chickens. Quail are not like tiny chickens, they're very different. Uh, so this year we got a real quail cage designed for quails so that we can manage them better. Yeah, the way we had it, it was messy and didn't have good feeders and waters for them, so yeah. we got the real deal this year. So we're, we're on a two-year cycle with for meat chickens, so we're not raising meat chickens this year. We got plenty in the freezer still, um, but we had the meat chickens in this what we now use as a heifer pen and uh, one of the things we'll probably do one of the projects is is um, work on making this a little bit better and get some cattle panels and stuff mm -hmm. um, for the, any ex, any heifers that we have this year as calves um, that's one of our big goals this year is not to buy any more breeding stock animals yeah so after going through our finances from what we spent <laughs> in 2022 um, is it embarrassing? Uh, it, um, it's an investment. It was a huge investment for what we what we invested in 2022 for buying our breeding more breeding stock, quality breeding stock. Something that we don't want to repeat in 2023. Yeah. We just can't we can't sustain it. So <laughs> we need to to put some firm boundaries in place. But I don't know. It was part of our plan. Uh, another plan that we have. I do like to do a few projects every year. I do have a big project in mind, as long as my neighbor hooks me up with some of the materials. He's a <laughs> builder, he's got a barn full of stuff, he said I could have. It's just a matter of getting it and then having the time to do it. But one of the projects I have here is just reworking the hay feeding system that we have for our goats. I just used the IBC tote here um, to make them a new feeder, which is working great, but I have an idea for a round bale feeder something that I can just drive a round bale in in the winter time and feed them more easily, I guess. So that'll be a project that's on the list with all materials I already have, so I'm not gonna have to spend any money doing that. With feeding the goats and the changes are there, I am gonna do some modifications with this setup too, probably as far as feeding the cows. It works good, but um, it worked better when we were feeding the big squares, which right now we're feeding big rounds, so I'll probably do something a little bit different here for the cows just because the, the bales that we get the baleage anyway it's kind of hard to pull apart and spread it around because they're packed so tight one of our big goals for the dexters are milking so jolene here are kind of like a light cinnamon colored dun heifer she is going to calve for the first time this spring and she is our friendliest dexter she dislikes me the least <laughs> so we are gonna really put in a good effort to training jolene into being a milk cow and i'm super excited she's beautiful and sweet and i do like spending time with the animals milking and we're still not sure what what greta's future holds so if you've been following our channel and greta's unusual milking She's a heifer, she's never calved, but she's coming on, she'll be three this spring, right? Yeah. And she's never calved, um, so we've been having trouble getting her pregnant, and but she's produced milk since she was like one year old. So kind of a weird thing. Uh, she's a great girl, we've been milking her. Um, I did stop for the winter, and we're unsure if she's pregnant at the moment. So at some point, uh, our veterinarian friend will come over and um, pregnancy check her for us and then we'll determine what to do with her if she's pregnant or not. Yeah, he might this coming week actually. Oh, good by, deal. By the time this 
airs, maybe he will already have been here. But she is big and round, which means she eats a lot and she's not earning her keep right now, so. Yeah, I'm really hoping she's pregnant. She's such a sweet girl. But if if she's not pregnant, um, I'm hoping she'll, she'll come into milk again or if I start milking her, maybe she'll start back up and I can find her a good home as a family milk cow for a family that doesn't want to keep a bull. She's, she's been great for us. If she'd just get pregnant. It's not dinner time yet. As far as our big pigs go, we're still determining what we're gonna do. We're talking about getting rid of the Tamworths. We don't really wanna get rid of our boar, Tamworth boar, but we're not really sure what to do. We haven't really decided. Uh, we're gonna wait to see how our Berkshire's Pharaoh uh, before we make any decisions, but we're going to try to keep our breeding stock kind of right where it is around five or six sows, so. We'll see, we're not really sure. But we are planning on getting our freezer license to sell pork. If you want piglets, follow our Facebook page and we will put when the piglets are available and how many we have because we got a list and it's just too much to manage and we don't know how many piglets we're gonna have, so. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if we're gonna be raising them out for, for um, freezer sales too, so. We're trying to find the smartest way to work, so we're not working harder, but smarter. And we're still not sure which breed makes the most sense. Part of that depends on how the Berkshire Sparrow and if we have better luck selling registered Berkshires for more money than our unregistered wheat pigs. But they're all good pigs. Yeah. So that's well, what makes it tough. Sally's not going anywhere at Hereford. She produces the nicest piglets and they grow fast and they are nice and round and plump and tasty. So. Well, and plus Sally has the best temperament. Yeah. She's like you are. She's just slow and calm um one of the things i've been talking about for a few years this greenhouse is i don't know going on year four and i might buy another one harbor freight they were like 750 dollars. i'm not sure what the price are now but i might buy another one and connect another greenhouse to this because i start all my own tomatoes and stuff and we like to grow some things in the greenhouse i don't know it's something i've, I've thought about not sure if we're going to do it or not but we'll put it on the list as a goal because maybe we'll do it maybe we won't one of the big things we're changing this year is i'm not going to be growing pumpkins in our field they take up a lot of space pretty much the last three years we've been pretty much in a drought we get some rains last year was an okay year but pumpkins take up a lot of space and we're, I'm going to try growing more sweet corn and green beans and more produce stuff that sells really good in the in the in the uh, at the farm stand. And now that we have uh, water out here with lots of pressure, I can irrigate if I need to. But the pumpkins, I'm going to scale back on. Just grow winter squash and a few varieties of pumpkins. But I know a guy that I can buy bin pumpkins from in the fall to bring pumpkins up here and and sell them that's a big change i don't think we'll sell any but i'm really hopeful that this is finally the year that our fruit trees really take off we had some apples last year um that finally started to come in but i'm looking forward to putting up some fruit from the farm we got four kids and they eat a lot of fruit yeah. <laughs> and then uh one of the things i hate is my big messes that i have around here i like to have a yard that looks neat and tidy and it's hard to do on a farm but um, as long as you can't see it from the road I'm, I'm fine with it but I just piled a bunch of junk back here and you come over the hill and you, I can see it and it bugs me <laughs> so I need to move my junk into the back I've got that old trailer back there camper trailer that I house my uh, beehives in the empty hive boxes so that is going to get cleaned out and I'm gonna sell that thing and just clean up some of my messes maybe do some rearranging with the pigs again this is st starting our fourth year with the big livestock being able to move things around figure out how things will work best easiest for what we have um, as a process so so we'll see we're gonna probably move some some animals pens around again but my problem is, is I do like to grow lots of vegetables, so we got to find the meat happy medium of which 
how much space for growing and how much space for the animals. Hopefully in the future we can purchase some more land where that won't be as big of an issue, but right now it's a process we're managing and Knowing you, it doesn't matter how much land we have. You're always going to try and do more than we can on it. Oh, yeah. That's my <laughs> go, go big or go home, right? And anything worth doing should have been done yesterday. Yeah, except this time of year. As you can see, like some of our videos, we usually are always shooting outside. It's been either white or muddy. And right now we're in a white phase here. Thank goodness. And uh, I don't know. Hopefully we don't have a, a prolonged winter like we did last year, cold into April, but the way it's been so mild, it's got to hit us sometime. As far as the honeybees go, I've got three hives going. I have no idea if they're alive right now. <laughs> I have not been in them other than cleaning off the front boards uh, when they get a little snow. A few weeks ago they were buzzing alive. If you lose bees, they can die pretty quickly in the winter time. But um, I'm going to keep it small, maybe get up to eight hives if they survive and do some splits, but doing the bees is probably my least favorite thing to do on the farm. So it brings in, you know, this little bit of income with selling honey, but uh, it's a lot of work. It's probably like the most labor intensive thing that we do almost. I feel like beans are the most labor intensive, but I don't do the yeah, bees. You don't, but, you know, <laughs> I'd rather pick beans than pull, pull honey. Okay. But he's getting some tusks, isn't he? Yeah, he is. <laughs> All right, so if you've watched our videos, you know that we've got uh, a new Cooney boar and two more Cooney gilts that we'll be breeding, well, I guess a year from now, but we need to modify our Cooney yards here and figure out where we're going to put them. Since we have the two boars, I'm going to keep the boar separate and then, you know, move the girls into who we want to breed who with. So the coonies are probably going to be moving out of our backyard. So we are just got to figure out where we're going to put them. And again, make the pens so it's easy. I guess this could be like a coonie piglet pen. Yeah. I'm excited to have more coonies on the farm. <laughs> well, I, I just... Love them. <laughs> I just sold the, our last two... Well, I, I have a buyer for our last two barrows, so we'll be back down to just uh, the ones that we're keeping for breeders. They are such fun pigs, though. I love them. All right, so you can see behind us, I've got goats in breeding pens right now. So um, this is kind of like a double check round. So anybody who didn't take for late March kids, the does that are just getting bred now will kid in late June after school gets out. My goal for the goats this year is, I'm hoping not to lose any kids. Yeah, we only lost one kid last year and you know, maybe it was already dead on arrival, but by the time we noticed she was in labor, the kid was stuck and his hands were back. Um, so I want to do a better job of making sure I don't miss any deliveries, which is why we're timing the births this year for when I'm not working. We were able to find homes for all of our kids last year, except for this little guy here. If he pulls at your heartstrings, he's still looking for a new home. So I'm looking forward to lots of super cute, healthy goats. This is the first year we're using all of our own bucks too, which kind of makes it extra special. You get to see what traits everybody passes on. Um, so it will give us some idea about the genetics that our own breeders carry too. So who do we have over here? The fainting goats? Yep. So Karen, the red and white doe, when I put them in here yesterday, she and Clark, our buck, were so in love. But it looks like the, the moment has passed. <laughs> so hopefully Karen will give us kids right around June 20th. What do you think, Karen? Go then we got Maley's mini goat, Starla. She should have already been bred. Yep. We sold the buck that bred her. Mm -hmm. Then we have Apollo, who's just keeping her company. She's too young to breed. Yes. We retained her from 2022 from Phyllis, mm -hmm. who's outside, right? Yeah. And then in here we've got Dutton is our um, Nubian buckling. He's a nephew of Candyman, which if you follow Nubian genetics, Candyman is a very famous buck who has won a lot of accolades for being really excellent conformation. So his body structure is really good and he also has incredible milking genetics. So we're hoping Dutton's the total package, just like his uncle. And Nellie here is our 
fanciest dough. She has an incredible udder, so I'm really excited to see what she puts on her daughters. I'm hoping to get a daughter out of these two. And then Reese back there, she is a dough we retained out of Fawn from last year. So we'll get to have kids out of her this year too. Which one does it have the broken leg? Oh, that's over here. This is Laramie in the back. She's got a white pole, so a white patch on the top of her head. She is a niece of yeah, a niece of Candyman, right? Great, I don't know. She's somehow related to Candyman. I'll have to look it up. Um, so we're breeding her with Jimmy, our 6M Galaxy Buck, and Fawn, we're also breeding to Jimmy. Um, so we're excited to see what they pull together. A 6M Galaxy Lions and Nubians are known for um, excellent milk production. And Take Kelsey on a goat pen and all she does is talk about goats. <sighs> Holly, Casey, come here girls, Roses, come here guys. All right, so these are our Nigerian dwarves and we're breeding them to Joseph back there by the play structure. And uh, we're super excited for healthy kids out of this batch too. Broseph comes from really excellent proving milk and show lines. So his daddy got seventh place at national ADGA championship last year. So, um, I'm really excited to see how his incredible genetics improve the udders on our does. How are you touching that stinky thing? Mmm, he's cute. can't on his back. That is one of the best part about raising the goats is when they do kid, you never know how many you're going to get and what they're going to look like. So. Yeah. so if you like baby goats, like baby animals, the season is coming soon. Yes. Yeah, and the combinations you get, like Phyllis is almost pure white with cream spotting. And she had Paula last year who is black with gray and white spots. So you never know what you're going to end up with. So those are our plans for 2023. We're really excited to share them with you guys. And if you subscribe and follow our channel, then you'll get to see how things go in 2023. Thanks for watching.